Counter-Strike is hard. And some may argue that playing on T-Side is one of the hardest parts of Counter-Strike. And if you feel the same, then you've found the right video. I'm Ride or Die, and I've been playing Counter-Strike for a little over a year now, and I've climbed through every single rank on Face It, and now play with some of the best players in my region. In this video, I'm going to outline all the necessary things you need to do to consistently win on T-Side, and to constantly have the biggest impact on your team. But before we do that, we gotta talk about the sponsor of today's video. Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a fully automated CS2 trading site. Skins Monkey provides an instant way to get new skins. Along with that, they have a 24-7 live chat support. So if you run into any problems, they'll be right there to help you. If you're interested in finding a specific skin, you can use their search tool. Better yet, if you're not sure what skin you're looking for, you can use their filter tool to find exactly what you're looking for. If you use my promo code Ride or Die, you can earn up to $5 for free. Trade up $100 to make the most of it. Now, if you don't want to trade your skins, but you'd rather buy, Skins Monkey is now offering a 30% deposit bonus. And if you use my promo code Ride or Die, you'll receive an additional 5%. Remember, use code Ride or Die to get up to five dollars for free and claim your thirty-five percent deposit bonus. Thank you, Skins Monkey, for sponsoring this video. The very first piece of advice I have is targeted more towards players that are struggling in lower levels of Face It. If you're having a hard time on T side and you're playing below one thousand five hundred Elo in any region, you're likely missing opportunities to be patient and punish mistakes. Players at this level and below tend to misinterpret information given to them and also tend to disrespect when and where an enemy can be. Now, if you don't believe me, or if you think that this principle doesn't apply to your region, you're wrong. Every clip I've shown since I started talking is taken from 1,500 ELO on EU FACES servers from the same match. However, with all that said, sometimes you'll play against very passive CT players, regardless of your ELO. And if that's the case, those same players are also likely giving you free space on the map. And if that is so, then it's important that you take advantage of that because space equals round wins. But why? Why is taking space so important? Well, let's use Inferno as an example. A common strategy you'll see, especially in lower elos, is giving banana control and chain smoking the entrance onto B. If that's the case and you're able to take banana every round, this will open up opportunities on the other side of the map. The reason why this is true lies in your team's threat level towards B. As someone who's playing arches on A, if I either hear utility being thrown onto B or my teammate comms that they hear multiple car, then I'm far more likely to rotate, which leaves my lane and sight player on an island. What this does, it creates a gap in the defense and ultimately breaks down the CT's default. Now I know what you're thinking, this is all great, but I'm not playing in a team environment. I'm playing random pugs with people that don't communicate. And sure, you make a valid point, but my counter argument is that your A lurker, walking brackets, doesn't need to know any of this. If you pull rotates because of your B presence and your random teammates find easier kills because of it, then playing with randoms doesn't matter. What matters is taking space and breaking defaults will win you games on T side, no matter who you're playing with. What the biggest problem really is, is understanding how defaults work on every map. The first question I have to anyone who tells me that they're struggling on T-side is this. Do you understand basic defaults on every map? Now, if you do know CT defaults in every map, then you may as well skip this part, but if you want a refresher or just to test your knowledge, then I'll quickly go through every map in the competitive pool. On Mirage, it's standard to have an A anchor playing somewhere on site, con player, window player, cat, and a B anchor. On Nuke, you should expect someone outside, a mini player, upper player, ramp player, and someone playing from heaven. On Dust 2, you will more times than not find three people fighting for long at the start of the round, then after that one should stay after another goes to game helper and another plays from sight. The fourth player should be helping mid doors and the CT player should be watching B as an anchor. Then Vertigo. First off, fuck this map, but CT should be set up by having one player anchoring B, another player playing mid, usually by Guardian, and three players fighting for early ramp control and once that's done, should rotate to help the mid lurk. On Ancient, one player should be anchoring A, two players should be fighting for mid with an instant elbow smoke, while another player fights for cave and the last player fights for ramp control. Inferno is very straightforward. Two players should fight for banana control early, while one player holds arches, another lane, and the last one can either control apps from balcony or play big pit. On Anubis, one player should be fighting for A main, two players mid, one player anchoring B while another plays from E box. On train, you'll commonly run into a 4A, 1B setup. For the A players, three of them should hold for the early T-con push, while one player holds for IV aggression. From there, the map becomes very fluid and like similar to Nuke, it becomes very easy for either team to make fast rotations to either site. Now, the important thing to know is that all of these setups only apply to CTs when they're on their full buy round. And depending on your ELO and the patterns that they are recognizing, these setups may change. And another time that will especially change is during pistol rounds. Many teams will employ this infamous 
3B setup on practically every map. Like seriously, every map other than Nuke and Train, you'll probably run into some sort of B stack on pistol round. Speaking of pistol rounds, we should talk a bit about economy. Because CS2 is played with an MR12 format, understanding and knowing how to use economy to your advantage is very important for your success, not just on T side. Most of you will already know this, but if you don't, it's important that you start doing this in your matches. If you're playing on T side and you lose round one, but the bomb gets planted in the process, the following round you and your team should absolutely force. The reason behind this is your ability to ruin the CT's economy. If the CTs fail to convert round two, then they'll be forced into what's called a double save. This means that their money is so bad that there's no reason to not force all their money on round three. And because even if they save everything, when round four comes, they won't have enough to warrant a force buy. Because of all this, round two in a lot of matches will decide the direction of the half. The last thing I'll mention about economy is something I saw while I was watching Stewie2K's live stream. The same situation happens to his team on Ancient, where they lost pistol round with a bomb plant in round two they had forced. Stu and his team ended up winning round two, which put the CTs into a bad force buy the following round. But something Stu did at the end of round two surprised me. Instead of holding onto the glow that he forced, he decided to take the MP9 off one of the CTs. This at first sort of confused me, but as I thought about it more, it ended up making more and more sense. Stu knows that the next round he'll likely run into 5.7s or deagles with the off chance someone has an MP9. And if they do have an MP9, they definitely won't have head armor, which in that case, he'll still have an advantage. His team ends up winning round three and four, and doing this, Stu racks up multiple kills with the MP9, which also yields a higher kill reward than the Galil. So by round five, he had set himself up, and more importantly, his team with better economy. That is just one example of how you can use economy to your advantage. The more you know about how the game works, the better position you can put yourself and your team in. Something that goes hand in hand with economy is winning in clutch situations. The reason why I relate these two so closely together is for the same reason. The MR12 format puts significant emphasis on economy in close round wins. The difference in a lot of my games can honestly be boiled down to three or four rounds which were decided by one or two players. This could honestly be my own bias, but from my own opinion, most face-it matches are truly decided by one or two people's performance in these type of rounds. I'm sure a lot of you agree with me when I say this, and that's cool and all, but what's more important is how you can start being consistent in these situations. The honest truth about winning in these situations comes down to experience. You can play non-stop retakes all day for weeks and see significant improvement in your 1v whatever capability, but nothing really replicates from learning from your mistakes in game. And that is solely done by being put in these situations and seeing what works for you and what doesn't work. Also finding areas that you feel like you need to improve on. But if you're interested in learning more about winning more often in these scenarios, I made an entire video dedicated to this topic, which you can check out. Link to that will be in the description. Okay, the last tip before we go into how you should be approaching each round on T-Side is this. Learn how to correctly path when entering a site. I don't wanna go over every single site in this video and explain the correct pathing for every scenario, but I'll give you some important rules to follow and one good example. The first rule is when pathing onto a site, Especially if you're first, you need to take as much space as possible to get your team in a better position. Even if you end up dying, the amount of information you get for the remaining players to take sight is essential for a winning round. Also, to the maximum extent possible, you should not expose yourself to several angles at once. And third, the kinds of smokes your team throws, if any, should dictate how you path onto sight. A solid example of this is your pathing onto A site from A main on Ancient. A lot of A's. What a lot of players will do is rush to big box after leaving A main. This is wrong for a few reasons. When running to big box, you simultaneously expose yourself to temple and donut. Your team should always be throwing a CT smoke from A lobby or at least be throwing one from A main. If this is done, better pathing would be run directly towards donut to cross. If you're joined by another teammate, this will almost always result in you winning the round via a trade and controlling donut and back site. All right, for the second half of this video, we're gonna focus on some tips and advice for each kind of buy round during your T side, starting with round one. If you're in lower elos of face it, as in anything below face it level six or seven, you should always be getting Kevlar. There's no sense in getting utility when your teammates are not going to use it properly. You'll almost always get far more out of having body armor and winning aim duels with these players that you're playing against. Also, regardless of your elo, you need to start moving more when you have a Glock. Of course, there are gonna be some times where someone with decent aim is gonna stop you, but there's nothing in this game more strong than running and shooting with the Glock. I made a video a few months back where I tested out running and shooting with all weapons in CS2, and what I discovered was that running and shooting with both the Glock and Tech 9 is insane. 
Doing this is especially important if you're the first one out. Not only will you be able to secure kills for yourself, but worst case scenario, you'll be generating a lot of space for your team to take sight. And one more thing, while you're using the Glock on pistol round, you should absolutely be jumping around corners. There is nothing more difficult for a CT when they miss their first USP shot and are forced to re-peek into 5Ts running onto their site. More times than not, they either don't re-peek or just lose that fight. Okay, let's say that your team lost pistol round and the bomb was not planted. Something that you can do is just buy a deagle for your save round. Doing this, granted you bought just armor the previous round, will at the very least make it so you can have an AK and head armor for your full buy. I don't really suggest this in higher elos since utility will often be the reason why you're able to find openings, but in lower elos where just having better aim and punishing mistakes will win you games, I absolutely do recommend this. And for your eco rounds, there is a reason why every high elo player is buying a deagle. It is the most overpowered weapon with good aim. And with that, I strongly suggest getting reps in with your deagle in a deathmatch server to come better at using it. If you watch VODs of pro players and high elo pug stars, you'll see them at least once or twice a game steal a round because they are able to secure two or three one taps with their deagle. Now moving on to your full buy rounds. Out of everything that I'm going to share with you, this is easily the most important piece of advice, and this was the reason behind me wanting to even make this video. And that is, you need to find a rhythm. In solo queue, on Face It, or whatever platform you play on, chances are you and your team are not going to be calling anything, and it'll be up to you to find a solid opening for your team. What's interesting is, this has remained consistent in at least a few of my matches, regardless of my rating. With that in mind, you need to figure out what it is that you like doing on each map. Figure out what space it is that you like fighting for and get really good at it. This was something I picked up on when I started watching more and more pro player VODs on Face It. Often you'll see the same player working for the same space on T side round after round. I watched one of Donk's matches a few months ago on Face It, and this VOD stuck with me since. Every round on T side Anubis, he would smoke left side on B and peak B main. In every single round, he got an advantage for his team. His crosshair placement was perfect. He was ready for CT aggression, and he was able to recognize any opening that CTs were giving him. And this wasn't against low-level face-it players. This was against 3,000 plus ELO players on EU. On each map, learn how to take control of whatever space it is that you like fighting for, and over the course of several games, as you're challenged by different players, and you figure out how people react in your ELO, and as you climb, become more challenged by better players, learn from that too. Master your crosshair placement and learn all the nuanced utility that goes along with it. Now for the very last thing, we're gonna talk about force buys. There really isn't much advice I can give you on this other than this. If your team plans on taking something fast due to low money, make sure you buy the right weapon for it. Sure, the Deagle is great at one tapping, but nothing beats the Tech 9s ability to run and shoot. Too many times I see people buy weapons that are not in line with what their intentions are. The same principle applies to buying a MAC-10 or a Galil. Are we defaulting? Are we looking to take space somewhere fast? If that's the case, maybe I should buy a MAC-10 and extra flashes with head armor rather than in a glow with Kevlar. Whatever you do, make sure your buy matches your intentions. Hopefully I was able to provide some insight on how to play better on T-Side. And before I end the video, I wanna quickly mention all the names that are scrolling by. All those people are members of the Ride or Die Club and are the reason why I continue making content. So thank you. If you wanna become a member, be sure to hit the join button down below or save it for next time when I go live, which is essentially every day. Also, if you're looking for a new Discord to join, you should check out the Ride or Die Discord. There we do giveaways, host 10 mans, and have an LFG channel so you can find the like-minded players to queue with. Anyways, that's all I got. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you wanna stay up to date with my content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. Thanks for watching. Beautiful, nice job. They can't stop you, dude. Unbelievable.